Hello everyone and welcome to my first podcast. My name is Alejandro Bocija and I am quadriplegic. On my first podcast, I want to talk strictly about the reasons why making airplanes wheelchair accessible is important. For those of you who don't know, airplanes are simply not wheelchair accessible. A lot of people have misconceptions and they think they are only because people who are in wheelchairs can actually travel, but they do not travel in their wheelchair. They have to be transferred on the door of the airplane to a normal airplane seat. And for a lot of people who have disabilities, because of the function of their body and because of their physical capabilities, well, they just cannot be transferred to a normal airplane seat. So the thing the fact that they cannot travel in their own wheelchair makes it impossible for them to travel. The only way to make airplanes wheelchair accessible is if people could travel in their own wheelchair. That's why I wrote down uh, a number of reasons why I think, in my case, or from my perspective, I think it is important to make airplanes wheelchair accessible. Um, they are not written in a specific order, so I'm just going to go one by one and explain each of them. Number one, wheelchairs are fitted to our bodies to hold us in a safe, stable and healthy position with the help of straps, laterals and seat belts. Um, what I mean by this is basically you compare uh, the wheelchair where we are seated all day long to uh, any airplane seat and you can see how a wheelchair can be a lot more ergonomic than the airplane seat. Um, the wheelchair that I use has laterals because I have no balance on my upper body and I also have scoliosis. It has a specific cushion with a specific shape to keep me with my back straight and it also has footrests. Uh, they are set to a specific height uh, to keep my legs in the best angle and my butt doesn't slide forward and my back is straight and I am comfortable and healthy. On the other side, airplane seats are normal seats. They have no laterals, they have nothing to support you, sometimes they don't even have armrests and when they do, they are usually very low. And it just makes it impossible for someone like me, because of my physical capabilities, to be able to sit in a normal airplane seat. Forget about it if we're talking about sitting there for a lot of hours. I am from Spain and I live in New York. And each flight from Spain to New York is from six to eight and a half hours. And yes, I have traveled and I'll tell you how I travel. But each time I travel, the only thing I can tell you is that it's physically and psychologically painful. But anyway, let's go with reason number two. Our wheelchair cushion is made of materials like gel or air that prevent our butt bones to break through our skin from sitting on it for long periods of time. And this is just how it is. In my case, I have a special cushion made out of air bubbles. And these air bubbles are what prevent my butt skin to break because I sit on my wheelchair for sometimes 12, 14, 15 hours a day and my butt skin doesn't break. Now, if I sat on a normal airplane seat for a long period of time, my butt skin could actually break and it could cause a pressure wound. And pressure wounds, for those who don't know what they are, are wounds that are caused by your butt bones breaking through your skin and making a big hole on your butt. And when this happens, you can get a risk of infection. Some people die from the infection, risk of high blood pressure. And on top of that, they take months and months to heal. So you can understand why someone who is in a wheelchair would not want to sit in a normal airplane seat for many hours, because these airplane seats are not made to prevent any kind of pressure shore that could happen to someone that uses a wheelchair that has 
little muscles on your on their butts and very thin skin number three having to pay for first class seats only to be able to use the reclining function of the seat to be more comfortable is not a solution and it becomes financially draining and what i mean by this is that in my case in my own personal case the only way i can travel and the way i have been traveled until today is by paying for first class seats for me and for my caregiver that in this case is my mom and yes i can travel thanks to the reclining seats they recline now i am six foot one and for someone that is six foot one those reclining seats are not long enough so if i tried to recline the seat all the way and lay there my neck and my feet would be touching both sides of the seat in a way that either my legs would have to be bent or my neck would have to be bent so i always have to sit in a very awkward uncomfortable position which is not reclined all the way with my feet on the ground and my legs slightly lifted and it feels like i'm always sliding down it's very uncomfortable and i wish i could stay on my wheelchair for the entire flight because as i said before it's fitted for my body and it's a lot more comfortable and safe number four people taller than six foot one like me do not fit in airplane seat comfortably to make it worse we cannot move get up or go to the bathroom during the entire flight we have to endure the pain and suffering for as many hours as the flight lasts i am lucky enough that i can pay for first class seats but there are other people who have to fly in normal economy class seats and people that are my size and even taller i have personally no idea how they can achieve it if they were in my in my situation with my physical capabilities but for me it's very uncomfortable and as i said we cannot move and we cannot go to the bathroom so if you need to use the bathroom and you're usually used to do it in your chair which is usually very comfortable because we are set in positions that are easy to access you will probably have a hard time because airplane seats are very crowded they are crunched with each other they are lower to the ground than wheelchair usually and they have plastic parts on the sides that don't move so it's very difficult to access someone in an airplane seat versus someone who is in a wheelchair number five people in wheelchairs are the first to get into the plane but also the last to leave this translates into more hours sitting in the uncomfortable and painful airplane seat um when you're in a wheelchair you are as i said the first person to get into the airplane and you are also the last person to leave so as you see everyone getting up getting the suitcases the plane gets empty you're still sitting in your airplane chair and not just that you have to wait until they bring your wheelchair back up to the airplane door and sometimes they don't even do that because they can't you have to be wheeled into a very uncomfortable definitely not it's not made for people who have chronic disabilities uh i mean physical chronic disabilities so you have to be wheeled with that wheelchair all the way through the airport until the place where your power fitted wheelchair is waiting for you for all of you this might sound stupid but we not only have to be without moving without going to the bathroom in that airplane seat for as long as the flight lasts we have to do that for longer than anyone else and when i tell you that the physical and psychological pain can become completely undurable i am not exaggerating so that's just one more reason why we need to make up this wheelchair accessible number six the faa requires for airplane seats to withstand 16 years of force wheelchairs are used in cars trains boats 
and also some roller coasters. The security methods are proven to withstand more than 16 Gs of force. Now, there are two methods that have been tried already and they are used in cars already. And those are universal and they are called, one is the easy lock method and the other one, I don't know the exact name, but I'll tell you exactly in what it consists of. The easy lock, that consists on a very thick screw on the bottom of the wheelchair and then a metal base that would screw onto the floor of the airplane. That metal base has a hole and when you wheel your wheelchair on top of that metal base, the screw immediately and automatically attaches into the hole. That hole locks in place and the screw just wouldn't move. This would lock any wheelchair in place and it would not allow it to get to move. It would not move during turbulences and it would not move during brakes. The second method, which in my opinion is even more universal, is the Ford Belt method. The Ford Belt method is that's the name I'm going to give it. It's basically four belts from the same material as seat belts that attach to each corner of the chair and attaches also to the floor of the airplane. This would lock each of the four corners in place of the wheelchair to the airplane and it would also not allow it to move. It would be completely safe during turbulences and it would be completely safe during all of the sudden breaks. Reason number seven, making airplanes wheelchair accessible will allow us to travel independently without the need of other people to come with us in the plane and without the need of help of the poorly trained airport personnel to transfer us into the airplane seat. Now this one is very important. People who have disabilities like me, we are always looking for ways to be more independent. We don't want help. We don't want to need your help. We just want the world to become more accessible so we can become more independent. And if airplanes were wheelchair accessible and all those things that I talked about happened, we really wouldn't need anyone to travel with us. We could do everything on our own. And it's funny because the last reason I was going to talk about is during evacuations. Um, if there were a problem in the flight, we all know that disabled people are always the last people to get out of any dangerous situation. Mm, it's always able people get out first, disabled people get out last. And if there were an evacuation, obviously the wheelchair would not be in the middle of the aisle, it would be sitting in front of any other normal airplane seat. If everyone leaves that airplane and no one wants to think about me, there are two options. One, they leave me on an airplane seat which in case they would want to evacuate me from there, it is a lot more difficult to access me, my body, than if I were in my wheelchair. The wheelchair has laterals that move, it has armrests that move out, and it has footrests that move. So if everything moves, my body would be completely accessible for you to take it, even if you are only one person trying to take my body. On the other side, if I am sitting in a normal airplane seat, it would be impossible for you to take me if you were only one person. You would need two people to lift me out of there, only because of how difficult and how small the spaces are and how the plastic parts don't move and because of how low I am on the ground. And if everyone left and I was left alone, the other possibility is that I was on my wheelchair. I know this sounds crazy, but if I am on my wheelchair, at least I have one chance of trying to get out by myself and survive. And I think that should open the eyes to everyone. I always say it. I think it's crazy that airplanes are not wheelchair accessible yet. Obviously, no one from the FAA is in a wheelchair. No one from the top board of the FAA is in a wheelchair. And I think it's crazy that even myself, I didn't even know that airplanes were not wheelchair accessible 
until I became paralyzed myself. And I would hate for you if you're listening to me and you're not in a wheelchair at all, you're not disabled, to feel like you need it in the future. Because I'm telling you right now that airplanes are not wheelchair accessible. So you have two options. Either you believe me, you share my message, and you help me achieve this, or you think this is bullshit, you think wheelchair accessibles are just not important, and then in the future, when you actually need it, you have to suffer like me and many, many, many other people. I have created a petition to make airplanes wheelchair accessible. As I speak right now, we have more than 56,000 signatures. I would love for you to be the next signature. And I would love for you to please share it in all your social medias if you have to. Please follow me on my social medias. I make many videos on TikTok. And I also post many videos and important updates on Instagram. I connect with you mostly on Snapchat and Twitter. So follow me there too. I have a Patreon where you can support me with my cause and help me keep fighting. So if you want to become a Patreon, please go to www.alejandrobotija.com and you have the links to the petition, my Patreon, my social medias, and everything you need to know about me and what I fight for. I am sure you probably feel how my tone of voice changed from the beginning of this podcast to now, because it's very difficult for me to talk about this issue without getting heated. It is something I need and it's something many people need. It's something that people have been needing for years, many, many, many years. And we still don't have it. And we're still fighting for it. This is a fight. Don't get it wrong. This is a fight. They're not going to give it for free. And they're not going to give it easy. So we need to make them understand that we need this. And we, not, we cannot stop until we get it. So thank you for listening to me. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you so much. Have a great day.